up in this episode, I will discuss rewriting a novel, beats within scenes, experimenting with first and third person point of view, and scene blocking. So stay tuned. Welcome to Amelia's Behind the Scenes Author Diary, an exclusive look at the behind the scenes misadventures of a 30-something mystery author. Discover how close she is to releasing her latest novel, hear exciting details about upcoming writing projects, and discover the lessons she has learnt along her writing journey so you don't have to make the same mistakes. You can find the episode show notes and lots more information at ameliahay.com forward slash podcast forward slash bts. Hello writers, I hope you are well and are staying safe. Just to let you know, this episode was recorded on Wednesday the 22nd of July and I'm not sure if I can hide this or not, but at the moment I have a sore throat, there's a lot of traffic outside, all of a sudden my husband is in a meeting, so there's all this background noise and you know what, probably someone will start vacuuming. This is just how things are. And because I'm a perfectionist, I hate all this background noise. But I do realise it's not everybody is like me and can handle that type of thing, but I can't. I think this is my main problem with podcasting is I want everything to be perfect, like a radio or studio, and that's just ridiculous. Hopefully I can hide my sore throat, I can take lots of breaks and sip water, and but it may or may not work out like that, so I'm sorry. It's just I can hear my voice breaking every now and then, and I'm just like, it's not going to hold up. It's really sad. So, like I mentioned, this was recorded on Wednesday the 22nd of July. However, the script for this was actually written way back in March as these events occurred in real time and over. And I think in April, I went through and I edited the script and I polished it to a readable slash listenable quality. So, just so that you're clear, this isn't me guessing what happened in March. I actually recorded it, took notes in real time. You get it. In the same spirit as the previous episode, there is a backlog with this show just due to the pandemic. After a few weeks I've managed to figure out how to work from home with my husband and do all of the things I would typically do and it took a long time for me to figure it out and to figure out how to be productive. Even though I'm quite an introvert I have really struggled with the pandemic and all of this has actually affected my productivity and my creativity and I didn't expect it to but it has. So if you're watching this on YouTube you'll notice that I've gone back to an audio only version of the podcast. That's because of obviously the pandemic and my hair situation. I know that's super vain but my hair is out of control. It's getting to a point where it needs to be cut and coloured and yeah it's I know that's super vain, but I can't just throw a cap on. It looks all wrong with the look, all style, I guess. It feels like the wrong word because I wouldn't consider myself a stylish person, but I guess the natural everyday style that I have, it just looks a cap. Throwing on a cap just looks out of place. And I'm tired of having the same hairstyles. What I've dubbed is the pandemic top bun. I'm just tired of having the same hairstyles and videos, so I've stopped recording weekly vlogs. I know it's a vanity thing but it's important to me so I've just decided to record just the audio only so I guess I'm sorry so the next few weeks until I can figure out my hair situation or convince my husband to cut my hair this is just how it's going to be for a while. Sorry I feel really bad that I've completely abandoned my YouTube audience visually. That doesn't make any sense does it and one last thing this is the last of the scripted episodes i'm going to experiment with going off script and trying a new approach to podcasting so fingers crossed it all works out Throughout this episode, I will be referencing tools and services that I've used. If you're interested in reading the transcript or would like links to anything that I've mentioned in the show, then check out the very long blog post or edited transcript at ameliahay.com forward slash bts029. And if you're new to this podcast, then I want to say a huge thank you for stopping by and trying out my show. To those of you who have been faithfully listening to my show, thank you for regularly listening in and supporting the show. Your support means more to me than you know. The 
there's nothing but good news in terms of rewriting for the first two weeks in March. I'm so excited, but I've found a way to get me writing every day. Putting stickers on a calendar like a five-year-old doing chores apparently is what it takes for me to get motivated to write. It's embarrassing, but it works for me. For those of you who are curious, on my blog there is an image of my calendar for the month of March. And for those who you don't want to click to the blog post that's perfectly fine so basically it's just a picture of an Alice in Wonderland calendar and it's just open on the March page and I've used stickers from a company called Kiki K and I've just slapped them on every day that I've worked for March and usually I put the first letter of the book title that I've worked on because I have a few projects going on. And you'll notice on the calendar that I am working on a few different projects. I know that's not quite productive, but at the moment I'm in a really weird headspace. And at the moment I just want to get myself writing and working on things. And this seems to have done the trick. Over the last few weeks, I've been agonising over the book title for my second novel in my James Lon series. I've brainstormed a few options and I've made my final decision. <laughs> Overall, I feel that this title better reflects the theme of the story than the original title. It's taken me quite a while to get used to the new name, but I'm happy with it nonetheless. And fun fact, a note from the future, yesterday I saw a book with the with my new title and it was written a few years ago, so I sort of feel like changing a title just because you've seen another book out there it isn't helpful because you will find another book with a similar title. Just a word of warning, if that's why you're, if you're in a similar situation to me and you've seen another book with a different title, there's a good chance that if you come up with a new title, there's going to be another book out there with the same title. So make sure you're changing the title of your book for a good reason and trying to be unique is not going to happen. So take that lesson from me. During the first week of March, I managed to fit in four writing days. That's four half days of writing. At the start of the week, book two started off with 47,268 words. On the last day of the week, the word count for the novel reached 48,198 words. So I contributed 930 words to my revised draft. It's not a lot of words for seven days, but the process of rewriting involves adding and subtracting words within the manuscripts. What did I achieve during those four days? I decided to revise the novel in chronological order. Chapter 2 required a slight setting change to correct issues with white room syndrome, where the dialogue seems to occur without a context. As I rewrote this chapter, I ended up researching the temperature and weather conditions of the locations in my novel because I wanted to give it a real world feel. Maybe this is lazy, but it means there's one less decision I need to make. Chapter 3 had similar problems in regards to white room syndrome and with the setting description. Because this story was the second full-length thriller that I've written, I made a mistake with setting description. I simply described the setting in a similar way that you would describe setting in a screenplay. In short, it wasn't filtered through the eyes of the point of view character. As a result, this needs to be rewritten as well. During the rewrites for this chapter, I needed to research the English Reformation, languages of religious manuscripts, and the description of smells and sounds. I used the emotion thesaurus, rural setting thesaurus, and images from my most recent trip to Oxford. Oxford to help me improve the scenes. At present, I'm going through a phase where I like to add in the extra senses of smell and sound where appropriate. For those of you who are curious, I'll leave a link to a great blog post on describing sounds over on my blog or in the show notes of your favourite podcasting app. In terms of character development, I had a discussion with Roland about using English as a second language. Just like my husband Roland, James speaks English as a second language. So French is his first language, English is his second, and I just wanted to make sure that the level of English that he's actually using is correct for someone who's been speaking English for about a decade. And the name of this blog post is 106 Ways to Describe Sounds, and it's from a blog called Writers Write. So again, that link will be in the podcast app that you're listening to right now. So if you go into the episode description, there should be links to these things just so you can check it out and use it in your own writing. 
On Wednesday, I performed a self-copy edit on chapter three because I didn't get it done on Tuesday. The technique I used to do the copy edit is I listened to the computer read the scene back to me in small chunks. I frequently pause to make changes to the beats or scenes that sound chunky. It's not a perfect system and the computer struggles with certain aspects of grammar like past tense, like read and read. It'll speak back that word as read. So even though the sentence, the context, is past tense like I read a book it'll say I read a book super frustrating but after a while you sort of get used to the robotic voice sort of saying it that, that way after multiple rounds of torture I then move the scenes over to Grammarly and I perform a pass with the help of Grammarly Premium once I made the changes in the program and then copy and paste the scene back into Scrivener before copying the scene into ProWriting Aid. While ProWriting Aid has a spelling and grammar check, I use the program to help improve writing style, reduce overused words and improve readability. And it also helps me to keep an eye out for inconsistencies within scenes. Next, I rewrote chapter four. It consists of an entire scene from the perspective of an unidentified person. As a result, the rewrite required me to be vague about certain aspects of the individual's identity but because I'm writing from a the perspective of an individual you very rarely reference yourself even if you were to write it in third person so it's I just don't name them but later on you do find out who this person is naturally this rewrite took longer than expected and I didn't get a chance to do the line edit for this chapter either the next four chapters, four, five, and six, are all single scenes, all from the perspective of an unidentified person. At the moment, I reference this individual in a similar way that the Princess Bride references the man in black, and that's Princess Bride the book, not the movie, obviously, but I don't know why I needed to say that. So it's written in third person point of view. As a result, the scenes are difficult to write in third person because I have to reference the individual without giving away certain aspects of their identity. Due to the complexity of the writing, I decided to write the villain's scenes in first person and all other scenes in third person point of view. I was a little apprehensive about doing this in book two because I was planning on using this technique with a book in my byline series. On Friday, I rewrote chapter four in first person and it's so much better than the original and unexpectedly I enjoyed writing scenes from the villain's point of view. Before I made this decision I researched the use of first person and third person point of view within the same novel. I found a question and a series of answers on Quora quite helpful in making this decision. For those of you who are curious over on my blog and in the show notes of your favorite podcasting app is a link to this question on Quora and I won't read out the link because it's so long it's not funny. During the second week of March, I managed to fit in three writing days. That's three half days of writing. At the start of the week, book two started off with 48,198 words. And on the last day of the week, the word count for the novel reached 49,572 words. So I contributed 1,374 words to my revised draft. What did I achieve during those three days? On Monday, I read through, revised and performed a line edit for chapter four and rewrote chapter five in first person point of view. Towards the end of the day, I had issues with Pro Writing Aid's web app. It was slow analyzing one 900 word scene. At this stage, I'm ready to cut out anything that's wasting my time. So I stopped doing the Grammarly and Pro Writing Aid passes as I went along. On Wednesday, I rewrote chapter six, seven, and eight. Because I stopped doing the line edits as I went along, I was able to rewrite the scenes and get closer to reaching the end of act one. It wasn't until Friday that I started scene blocking and writing beats for a new scene in chapter 9. Here I'm using the term beats in the same way that a screenwriter uses the term. A beat is a movement within a scene where the emotion shifts from one point to another. You can have multiple beats to a scene. A beat is what an actor works with during pre-production to prepare for a role. 
Essentially, beats help a scene turn, or in story grid terms, it helps a scene change in value. For instance, a scene could start off positively and end in a negative way, or in my case, start off negative and become a double negative where things get worse. Before I write a scene, I write down these moments that help the scene turn. It's how I make sure the scene fulfills its purpose in the story. Scene blocking for me is a little different to a beat. Before I write, I like to block the movement of my characters across the stage. Again, this is a technique I picked up from writing stage plays, screenplays, and figuring out how to direct. It's easier for me to picture how a scene plays out if I know how every character moves and the direction they are facing. By the way, I only do this for first draft writing. When rewriting a scene, I'm not re rewriting it from scratch. I'm merely rewriting specific beats. If I do a complete rewrite, I already have the beats and the scene blocking playing in mind. I just sort of, unless the setting changes so dramatically that I need to move the characters in a different way, that's the only reason why I would rewrite the scene blocking again. That hasn't happened to me so far, unless I'm adding a brand new scene into an existing story, like I did with chapter nine. That's a completely new chapter and scene. After all of this scene blocking and writing beats, I wrote and revised chapter nine in third person, and then I revised chapter 10 and 11. Unfortunately, this left me with one chapter left to rewrite in act one at 7 p.m. on a Friday evening, and by that time, my brain was completely fried. So if you want to understand a little bit more about beats within a scene, then check out a blog post written by moviemaker.com, and it's called How to Develop Story Beats for Screenplay Writing. Sorry, I only took down the URL, and I realized the URL is stuffed with keywords, so it doesn't quite make sense, but I'm pretty sure it's How to Develop Story Beats for, sc for a Screenplay. And again, I'll link that in the in your favorite podcasting app and over on the blog post my fortnightly writing goal was to reach the end of part three by saturday the 28th of march to be honest it was an ambitious goal which i did not meet Something unexpected happened to me during the last two weeks of March that changed everything for me. During the last two weeks of March, I managed to fit in four writing days where I worked on book two in the James Alon series. That's four half days of writing. At the start of the period, book two started off with 49,572 words. On the last day of the period, the word count of the novel reached 49,845 words, so I contributed 273 words to my revised draft. It's not a lot of words for 14 days, but the process of rewriting involves adding and subtracting words within the manuscript and also research. This is really where I flesh out my story world and give it a deeper level of realism. Throughout these last two weeks in March, I spent a lot of time trying to get clear on the motives of each character for committing the murder. With book two, I wanted to make it a little challenging for the reader to figure out the who done it while presenting all of the facts. And the best way I can to do this is to make every character a suspect. In February, I also made another crucial decision about how I wanted to rewrite the story. I decided to eliminate James's interaction with the police, leaving him to do his own investigations independent of forensics and police resources. Due to this change, I needed to come up with a plausible reason for each character to talk to James now that the police are no longer accompanying him on his investigations. This wasn't easy as I first thought, but I believe I've come up with some exciting and believable reasons. And this is something that I changed as I rewrote Missing. I ended up having a conversation online with a journalist and I decided that it wasn't realistic for James to cooperate with the police because he's a journalist while he would have contact and, and interview them it makes sense for him to do his own investigations and because this is book two in a series I needed to keep that promise to my readers where it will just be J James investigating something and like an amateur sleuth and not make this series a police procedural because that's not what my readers have signed up for so I need to keep true to what I've promised with the series as well. As I was rewriting chapter 12 which is the final chapter in the first act of the story I decided there was something unrealistic about the earlier chapters in my story. Due to this decision, I went back and added an extra item of clothing to the antagonist's outfit to conceal their identity. This meant I needed to go back and check 
for inconsistencies with the villain's clothing in, in the entire Act 1. And because this isn't a novella, it's a full-length novel. With I have every intention of reaching the 60,000 word mark with this, so it means that chapter, sorry, not chapter, Act 1 is quite substantial, so it does take a long time to go through and read. And I cheat, so I like to listen to the computer reader back, so then I have to stop, and it does take a while. Earlier on in this episode, I mentioned I stopped performing the self-line editing using Grammarly and ProWriting Aid as I went along. On Monday, I had to go through chapter 6 to 12 performing the self-line edit. To be honest, this week, the programs seemed to work well and everything was all smooth sailing. So maybe they had a bug and their engineers sort of figured it out and I just happened to be using it at the wrong time. After this, the next step was to export the ebook cover from Photoshop. I've done five drafts of the cover since I first started writing the book. So I save every version of the cover just in case I change my mind and want to go back to a previous version so I don't have to recreate it. At this stage the cover is still in CMYK format which is the printable format but that's okay. I set the book up in vellum and sent the Act 1 sample to my alpha reader using Book Funnel and Mail Light with a list of questions to help with the feedback. My alpha reader read the story within a day, answered the questions and got back to me quickly. I applied the changes to the chapters 1 through 12 in Scrivener and that's the entire process from start to finish. Of course I need to repeat this process for Act 2 and 3. When I initially wrote the script for this episode, I, I foolishly thought this would only take 33 minutes. How naive I was. The final recording of part one and two was over 40 minutes and it was too long. So I chopped it up into parts which will be released on consecutive days. The first rule will be released on Saturday and the second will be released on Sunday. If you have any questions or have tips on book marketing that you would love to share with me, please come over to the blog post at ameliahay.com forward slash BTS029 and share your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you for listening and happy reading and writing everybody and I'll see you in part two of the author diary update for March. Thank you for listening to Amelia's Behind the Scenes Author Diary. If you're new to this podcast or want to be notified about more episodes just like this, then click the subscribe button. I'm your host, Amelia, and I'll see you in two weeks' time for another diary episode.